All right, guys, this morning we we're out here at the Mint Hill Shoe Market. Shout out to my guy, Vinny B, because we we're going to be doing a first run in the Nike Invincible 3 inside this box here. Now, I have gotten this more than you would think, this shoe requested. We do have the Invincible 4 coming out at some point this year. Not confirmed by Nike, but confirmed by the internet. So, I've loved a lot of the Nike training shoes. I might be in the minority a little bit here, but I got some really good workouts. Yes, not just regular runs, but workouts in the Pegasus last year during my marathon training block. I used this for steady runs, so about 10 seconds slower than marathon pace. Those days where you just get out there and pop some pace for about an hour or so. This is a great shoe for that. And then also, if you guys have been following the channel, you saw I took this shoe to New York. I even took this atop the One World Trade Center and through TSA and all that. So one of my all time favorite, just regular sneakers to wear. This colorway is pretty sweet too. I th hopefully they come out with something like this in the 41. And then Vomero, again, super underrated daily trainer. It's got the top layer of Zoom X here. This guy is just a durable tank. And I know my guy, Dave, he has been loving the shoe. I recommended it to him a few months back and he called it his goat. And I really think I got to do a 200 mile review of this soon because I got to spread the good word about the Vomero 17. It's comfortable, it's supportive, and it blends some of that cushioning you'd get with a max cushion shoe in the heel with a little bit more ground feel in the forefoot. So it's a really fun, unique shoe. Now, I have not tried the Invincible 3 yet, which is why we're doing this video, but I have gotten, I don't, let's calculate here, 350 plus 300, that's 650 plus 250, that is 900. So I've gone over 900 miles across these max cushion shoes in the front here, New Balance 1080, all time favorite soft cushion shoe this guy if you want something to just protect your legs and cruise and comfort at a slow pace this is not a fast shoe this would be it if you want a comfortable daily trainer not worried about pace this would be it gel nimbus is what i was running in before the 1080 this is the 25 this guy is okay for me it's it's a nice shoe probably my second favorite soft shoe but the reason i say it's okay is the durability was not great the outsole coverage is not great and then triumph this is a non-plated king this guy's an absolute tank you got the power run plus beaded tpu foam in here it's bouncy it's great for long runs you could do some workouts in it only real issues are the stability is not that great but this is a champ and so nike invincible 3 competes with these shoes here today i want to take it out of the box do an overview and a little comparison to how it fits in the market and also to answer the question which one of our friends asked me yesterday is this shoe a good buy now that we're going to get some deals on it because the four is coming out and we're just seeing price in general drop down to that 110 to 130 range across a bunch of different sites so let's get into it guys hey look at that so shout out to nike by the way for sending this to me this is their shipping box they got the jordan logo i like it and let's see boom this is almost like the one thing about this shoe is they have i think probably i actually want to know if anybody knows i think they might have 40 to 60 different colorways of this across the life of the shoe maybe even more because they have all the team special <laughs> color editions for all the different colleges but this looks like the oregon ducks colorway so So the secret sauce of the Nike Invincible 3 here is not the dozens of colorways. It is this Zoomax foam. So Zoomax is Nike's racing foam. It's in the Alpha Fly. It's in the Vapor Fly. It's in the top layer of that Vomero here. And you get a massive chunk of it in the Invincible 3. And that's one of the things that initially made this shoe so popular and a lot more popular, or I won't say not a lot more popular, but a lot more of that cult classic in versions one and two and i think as this shoe has progressed through the stages and look at that invincible run three glisten as it's progressed through different life stages and gotten some updates some runners have felt like they've removed a little bit of that fun and so because this is such a squirrely foam you need that carbon fiber plate in there and the race shoes to stabilize it in here, you don't have a carbon fiber plate you have a little plastic piece out in the back to give a little bit more stability and also there are some rumors whispers that maybe this is a different slightly different formulation in this shoe in the vomero than in the alpha fly and the vapor fly so that's possible too but even assuming it is the same or very similar formulation it's gonna be a lot softer 
than some other foams out there. It's not gonna be as stable. This is definitely a neutral running shoe. So if you need any sort of support or stability, it's not gonna be great for that, but it does provide a ton of cushioning underfoot. And so pushing it in here with my hands, this is a very soft foam to the touch up there with the Nike or up there with the New Balance fresh foam. But sometimes it gets left out of that conversation with these guys in the front when thinking about what are some of those best max cushion shoes on the market because it does have such a polarizing ride. So even though these guys are soft, there's something about this shoe that just hits a little bit different for a lot of people. And if we go out here in the back, look at how chunky this heel is. And let's do a little comparison here. If we take a look at the Invincible and the Nimbus, these guys actually have really similar setups. And so it'll be interesting to see how they compare out on the ride. You could see 40 millimeter stack. Nimbus is actually above 40 millimeters. And then this super soft, squishy foam to the touch. The Zoom X is actually a little bit softer. And now heading up to the upper, this is another thing that I don't want to say differentiates. I guess this differentiates the Invincible 3. There's been some issues runners have reported with the heel lockdown, but around the back, you have a very structured piece here. You have this plastic support all the way from the very back here up at the Achilles, wrapping the whole heel. And it's not as flexible as the Nimbus, or let's check this one, or the 1080. This guy does have a structured piece, but it's not as structured as the Invincible. And so this is designed to give you a little bit more support out here in the heel. We'll see how it runs. All right, and then headed down to the bottom here. Nice outsole. This is a shoe designed to go tons of miles. And that is the great thing about all of these Nike shoes. Let's actually take a look at the Pegasus and Vomero here. So Pegasus is one that I got, I think almost two years ago at this point. And it probably has close to 150 to 200 miles on it, maybe closer to 150. I don't track all of them in Strava, I don't think. Tons of walks, tons of travel use. And you can see the outsole's in pretty good shape. And then the Vomero here, this guy has about 200 miles and same thing. We're not seeing a ton of wear on the outsole. There's a little bit of that smoothing out in the back here, but all things considered in great shape for 200 miles. So the Nike shoes, again, while they are polarizing and some runners feel they haven't been competing like these brands at the front, New Balance, Asics, Saucony, these are probably the top three hobby jogger brands right now. They are doing something when it comes to durability. And this is always a brand for me that has been reliable, consistent, and I've gotten tons of miles out of them and also anytime i see this swoosh i just think about my high school basketball playing days or lacing up in air force one in lowell massachusetts so i got lots of love for nike that's that's <laughs> that's for sure it's not like new balance sometimes i think up until i started running in new balance i associated them with being a dad shoe brand asics is a grandparent shoe brand and I don't think I even knew what Saucony was before I started running. And then look, so this colorway here, it looks like somebody wrote on it, zoom. And then you got the wake up in the back. We have the nice classic bright yellow Volt accents. Looks like a safety vest. That's pretty cool. And then clean white upper that is probably gonna get destroyed as soon as I run in this thing. But overall, Nike does a good job with the designs of these shoes. Now. Before we lace this up, I do want to do a little bit of a foam test to see whether or not this Zoom X is the same, tuned the same, in the same feel as what we get in the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly. So I'm going to bring those shoes out here as well as the durometer. And of course, we will also do the weigh in. So I'll pop the scale out here too. All right, guys, so we have our tools now the durometer and the scale. Now, I want to measure how soft this Zoom X in the Invincible really is. So as I've mentioned, this isn't a perfect way to test foam because this is a, I don't know, $20 tool you can buy on Amazon, but it does give us a directional sense of how soft these foams are. So Invincible here, clocking in at 44 in the heel. And let's check the forefoot, 48 in the forefoot. And let's see if we can get a little bottom. 50 on the bottom. Now let's check the vapor fly. 47 in the heel and 50 in the forefoot. So interesting. Invincible and vapor fly, very similar. The zoom X in both of these. Alpha fly, let's see, 53 in the heel and about 50 in the forefoot or 
you have 47 to 50 in the forefoot, depending on how hard you smash it. And this one we can get a good on the bottom. On the bottom, it's a little soft usually. 48. So the Zoom X across these three shoes was pretty consistent. So it should ride like a non-plated version of one of these guys. Of course, there's a little bit more support, more width to the foam, but I can see why people might find it unstable. <laughs> Only one way to find out though. We got to lace it up. But before we do that, let's do one little last weigh-in check here. So left shoe coming in almost exactly 300 grams in my size 10.5. Yeah, there's nothing inside. Let's check the other shoe. And interesting, Nike did not use the shoe stuffers, which I like. No need to use random stuff. 308, so this side was a little bit heavier, six grams heavier. And compared to some of the other shoes we have here, I think that's gonna be comparable, but let's check. Triumph 297, so extremely similar to the Triumph. Gel Nimbus 307, almost identical. And then 1080, which does have an EVA blend. But ironically, this is coming in as the lightest 286. And this is a half size bigger. This is a size 11. So I know we criticize EVA a lot, but look at that. Lighter than Piba, TPU, and whatever sort of EVA blend is in the gel numbers here. So all right, let's lace these things up. It's time to take them for a first run. What do you guys think? All right, guys, so plan for this run is a nice and smooth recovery run. We have put in a lot of work in this block, and now is the time to recover before the race next weekend. And so one more thing on the upper here, there is no gusseted tongue. We do have a lace pass through, decent amount of padding on the tongue. Overall, lightweight, a little bit of a structured upper, similar to... It almost reminds me of a more built up alpha fly with how you have this fabric material that's a little bit more starched. And on initial step in feel, wow, very comfortable. And I know people say this is an unstable shoe, which it might be, we have to see when we ride in it, but it is wider than I expected or feels wider than I expected in the heel. Then also the forefoot, you get a lot of width. You see it's popping out here, similar to the Nova Blast actually. And so this isn't a shoe that people often compare to the Nova Blast, but it's similar in spirit to a shoe like the Nova Blast and it's priced in between Nova Blast and Super Blast, but in that it's a shoe you want to log a lot of miles and leave your legs feeling protected. So we're not gonna be logging a ton of miles in this next week, but I do want my legs feeling protected, which is why I thought now would be a good time to bring the Invincible 3 out. So yeah, initial step in, super comfortable. Let me just compare it to the Pegasus super quickly here to see. But wow, the 10 millimeter drop is very noticeable. And I know that's something that a lot of runners don't love about Nike shoes. And in the Invincible here, it really does feel like I'm slanted, almost in a pair of high heels here with how much stack we get underneath the heel. So it'll be interesting to see how this rides. I haven't run in a nine, 10 millimeter drop shoe in a, in a little bit. Pegasus is also 10 millimeter drop. This is technically a nine millimeter drop, but it just feels like there's a lot of stack underneath the heel here. So let's do a quick walk-in comparison between these two. Man, the Zoom X is soft. On step in, this has got to be up there for one of the most comfortable shoes I've tried on step in. Much more comfortable than the Super Blast, more comfortable than the Cloud Monster Hyper, which I tried recently, more comfortable than any of those standard daily trainers, Nova Blast that I've tried recently. Well, that's not standard, that's a funky daily trainer, but yeah, up there with the 1080 in terms of step in feel, the Zoom X is really soft. We just gotta see how squirrely it really is out there on the run. So let's lace up this other guy here. So yeah, we're gonna keep it relatively short today, probably 30 to 45 minutes recovery run. Just some time on feet to clear the legs. I went on a hike yesterday with the family. It was just a short hike, four miles. But with having a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and a two-month-old, one of the two, either the two-month-old or the two-year-old, has to go on mom's back or mom's front. Then the other has to go on the dad's back. So the two-year-old was on my back. And my legs are feeling a little bit sore from that. So I'm trying to be mindful of making recovery good this week so that we can be fresh for the marathon. So we're gonna keep this run nice and short today. 
we got the last long run, or long run, it's not actually going to be that long, of the block tomorrow. Eight days out, guys. Let's do it. Nike Invincible 3 first run. All right, guys, let's see. So we got four miles, average 804 pace, 33 minutes. Certain shoes just work for me and others just don't. And these guys worked for me. They are soft, smooth, bouncy, everything I needed today in a nice recovery shoe. So I'm really glad that I got a chance to run in these because it makes these two shoes make a lot more sense or it just completes the trifecta here because if you think about this right we got the pegasus this is a standard training foam react this guy bottom layer it's not react it's a different foam called kushlon top layer of zoomx then this is full zoomx and it really does feel like there's a natural progression and a connection between all three of these shoes and the vomero makes a lot more sense to me now too because it almost feels like an exact blend of the Pegasus and the Invincible. But this guy today, wow, this is one of the most comfortable shoes that I've ever worn. And it's almost exactly what I was expecting from the Super Blast, which is that bounce, lightweight feeling, and felt good at a variety of paces. And I really wish, again, we only got, let's see, we only got four miles today and I wish I would have went a little bit longer, but I could have, but I'm trying to be conservative because we have the race in eight days. My legs are a little bit sore and there's no more fitness I'm gonna bank at this point. It could probably only do harm. So I'm trying to be smart. It does make me go a little bit crazy. I probably could have gotten 14 miles this morning in these and it would have felt awesome. But at the end of this run, I just wanted to keep going and going. They're bouncy, they're soft. They're everything that I want in a shoe where I just wanna bank some mileage, but also, pick up the pace here and there. And so this is giving me a little bit more of a daily trainer feel than I expected, but let's pop these off and do a full breakdown. Man, there is nothing like that anticipation in the week leading up to the race. And there's also nothing like the feeling of holding yourself back in every single run leading up to a race. I do not love this period, man. I love hammering workouts and just ripping off 20 mile double days so having to hold myself to a 30 minute recovery run because i'm scared i might get injured or push too hard this is not fun but it's all part of the process man <laughs> it's all part of the journey in eight days it'll be over then we can recover and start smashing some 20 mile double days again all right charlie just pulled up so I might do this breakdown later. But either way, I'll see you in a GIF. All right, guys, first thoughts on the Nike Invincible 3 after a recovery run and a bit of a break up there hanging out with the fam. So I try not to get too high or too low on these shoes after just one run. And of course, today was a little bit of a shorter effort than normal. I usually like to go 10 to 12 miles at least in these shoes on the first run to test them. But we got to prioritize the training and hopefully be fresh for the marathon in eight days. So four miles in this guy and in this initial 30 minute run, it gave me a lot of what I liked about the classic Nike training shoes, Pegasus and Vomero blended with, of course, you get a little bit of that elevated foam experience from the Zoom X, which makes it a little bit more similar to shoe like the New Balance 1080 V13, which is my favorite soft shoe of all time. So main differences from this guy and a lot of the other max cushion shoes on the market, of course, you are getting the full non-plated Zoom X, which is Piba, but regardless of what type of foam you're getting, what matters is the ride experience. So the biggest difference I was feeling in this versus 
to those other shoes is that nine millimeter drop, which gave me a really similar sensation to the Vomero, where you get a ton of stack out here in the heel, and then not so much up in the forefoot, and you really get a lot of ground feel. So that gives the shoe almost a dual character ride, where for more relaxed running when you're on your heels or your midfoot, and even just plodding along, not trying to run with a ton of force, it feels relaxed. And then as I picked it up towards the end, and I wasn't going super fast, it wasn't race pace or anything, but just dropped it, I think, to 740 on the last mile, which is normal aerobic range versus recovery range, I felt a little bit more pep from the shoe, and there was no point in this run at all, where I felt like I was fighting against the foam, which is an issue that I've had with the ASIC shoes, the Gel Nimbus, the Super Blast. I've had it with some of the other Max Cushion shoes too. wait for the truck to pass, but not so much the 1080 V13, but some of these softer foams where you're getting 40 millimeters in the heel without a plate, it can feel like I gotta dig a little bit deeper to turn over the legs. That was not the case at all with this shoe, and I almost wish I ran with some sort of a pod on here to measure how much balance and efficiency I was getting at my paces because it felt like it took a lot less effort to run at those recovery paces and it's kind of reflected in the heart rate. I'm not sure, I don't train by heart rate and the Coros isn't 100% accurate, but it felt like it was a lot easier to run in this shoe than a similar max cushion shoe at those paces. And so you're not getting a huge rocker in here or anything, but the foam is amazing and you do get a pretty light weight coming in at around, I think it was 300 grams for this much foam, which is not the lightest out of any of those shoes, but also keep in mind that you do get a massive amount of rubber on here, which is nice. Nike puts a lot of rubber on all of their training shoes. So decent weight, it didn't feel heavy at all. And as I was talking to you guys about the Cloud Monster Hyper yesterday, I don't mind if a shoe isn't the lightest weight, if it's gonna give me that bounce, similar to the Hoka Cielo X1, and why I think that shoe is a great racer, not a training shoe, a great racer, because you get a ton of bounce at the weight, which is, I think the weight's almost up here, this guy at 270 grams in that shoe in my size. So lightweight, soft and bouncy, super comfortable. I might have to take this out for a walk test and an everyday test because this may be one of the most comfortable shoes on step in that I've tried and it's not a super structured foam like Brooks Goes Max, that's my favorite walking shoe. It's got a little bit of a firmer feel. This does have that sinking in, but again, not sinking in like it's hard to turn over the legs when walking or running. So now main downside of the shoe or a downside people have highlighted is the stability issue and today I didn't feel really much of any instability. I also know the heel lockdown is a big issue some people have mentioned and if I weren't looking for it, I wouldn't. it wouldn't have even crossed my mind that that was an issue. Maybe at the beginning when walking, it felt like the lockdown wasn't great, but when I got out there and ran, there was no time where I felt anything weird going on in the back here. A shoe like the Adidas Boston 12, that has a really sloppy lockdown. Some of the other Nike shoes, the Nike Vaporfly 2 and the 3 a little bit, I could feel that instability, but with this shoe, there was no instability at all. The plastic piece, maybe that's what solved it in a 3. And then because you're getting this nice upper where I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah, you can see that it's this tight material. I felt a great lockdown around here combined with the feature socks that I use. I will drop them below. Somebody was asking me for what feature socks I use. I'll drop them below, but yeah, great lockdown on here. The toe box in the front here, not super snug. I didn't feel any rubbing though. I can get a little bit of rubbing out here. So overall, nice comfortable fit in the upper no issues with the lockdown, there was no lace bite. And I think if I weren't in this period of training that I am right now, I could use this as a daily trainer. And even coming back when I'm recovering from the marathon, I might be going for this SC Trainer V2 Cloud Monster Hyper, just rotating all these for a comfort oriented rebuilding and recovery rotation. And that's where I think a lot of runners are gonna find this fits best. If you want something super comfortable for eating up miles that doesn't have a plate, not harsh at all, but with a little bit of ground feel in the forefoot, similar to the Vomero, this is gonna give you a little bit of that ground feel in the forefoot, this is a great shoe. Now another downside or thing that I would be checking for going past an hour, and I'm gonna take this shoe past an hour at some point, it didn't happen today, but because you get a little bit more of that ground feel in the forefoot, I'm wondering how this foam non-plated, even though we get a ton of stacking it, feels for longer runs versus other foams in the category. So of course this is not a minimal shoe by any means, you get a ton of foam in here, but because you get 30 millimeters 
up in the forefoot here and Zumax compresses a lot. I'm wondering if it can stand up to the force of a long run two plus hours in the same way that a plated shoe like the SC Trainer V2 or even a non-plated shoe like the Super Blast or the 1080 V13 the way that those shoes can because they got a little bit more structure either because of a firmer foam or a plate. So this guy, 31 millimeters in the forefoot, felt great for 30 minutes, but I'm wondering how it's gonna feel two plus hours. So if you have experience taking the shoe two plus hours, let me know. I have to say Vomero was great. It didn't feel like it bottomed out at all. It just is a little bit more of a ground feel type of shoe, which is what you get in the Invincible as well. Now in terms of mechanics, I today especially, more of that mid, to heel striker and with as much foam as you're getting back here. Super comfortable for that. I felt great landing towards the back of the platform and then nice roll through here. Not a huge rocker again, but I did feel a nice roll and pop and the Zoom X foam compresses just the perfect amount for the paces that I was hitting today around that eight flat and then pushes me forward. And then toward the end when I was landing up in the front of the shoe, again, a little bit more ground feel and it didn't feel like I was fighting against the foam at all. Now, thinking about where this shoe fits in the category, it is important to talk about price and $180 for this guy right here. So for that, you are getting Nike's top tier racing foam, but that does put it $20 more expensive than the Nimbus, $15 more expensive than the 1080 V13, and the same price as the SC Trainer V2. And so for a shoe that's gonna keep you comfortable, cushioned, cranking out the miles. $160 is the baseline. You're seeing it now go up to $220 with the Cloud Monster Hyper. Super Blast is at $200. So this is in the middle and that feels appropriate to me. But with this going on sale for $100 or $130, I'll try to dig up the sale links and drop them below. But with this going on sale and I expect it to even go lower than that with the Invincible 4 coming out, this will be a great daily trainer buy at that $100 mark, which is gonna put it cheaper than any MSRP standard daily trainer out there if you want something with a little bit more ground feel, but comfortable. And that's the magic of the Nike training shoes. And that's something that I was thinking about as I was out there on the run. That's what all of these shoes share. Pegasus, Vomero, Invincible. They all give you a little bit more of a connected feeling to the ground. They don't completely numb out the ride experience like the Super Blast does, like the 1080 V13 does, a little bit more. And even if you think about the ASIC shoes, what they give you is that super coddled experience. That's the family vibe of the ASIC shoes, right? Nimbus, Nova Blast, Super Blast, they all remove any sort of connection to the ground. New Balance shoes, they give you this nice soft cushioned experience. Well, not the 880, but New Balance gives you a nice soft cushioned slight bounce experience. Then the Nike shoes, these all give you a nice amount of protection in the heel. And because they share this higher drop, a little bit of ground feel in the forefoot. So if you are a more traditional style runner, you don't wanna be removed from the running experience. You want a little bit more connection with the ground. That's where the Invincible 3 comes into play and it's gonna be the best max cushion shoe out of the ones I've tried. I know it's only a four mile initial run, but out of the ones I've tried, the best max cushion shoe for a little bit of ground feel. And that was the same thing with the Vomero. That's the best daily trainer that's protective but also offers ground feel. So this is a nice little bit of a change and offered something different to any of the shoes that I've run in recently where you got a lot of protection, but still a little bit of that purity of the running experience coming through. And so Nike is one of the OGs in the game. And I think that's why we see that connection, that ground feel, that simple feeling ride come through in a lot of their shoes. It ties back to how they started with simple shoes 40 plus years ago with the original Pegasus. So, so to answer your question, Chris, if this shoe is a good sale buy, and I know you did try it and run it already, but I think this is gonna be a great sale buy for a lot of people at $100, $110, $130. At 180, it's really gonna depend on whether you like that ground feel or not. For me, out of the box, this feels awesome. We'll have to see. I'm definitely gonna be getting more miles in the shoe. I got this in the Cloud Monster Hyper, which I need to start getting up to 100 after the race. But so far today, this was a sweet shoe. I can't wait to lace it up to do some walking and just be comfortable around town as well. So as always, guys, I appreciate the support. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.